Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at self-inductance for inductors in DC circuits. So let's get started. We're going to extend our ideas of inductance and inductors that we've already seen so far. So it says here that we have already seen that a current in a coil sets up a magnetic field through and around the coil. When the current in the coil changes, the magnetic field changes. A changing magnetic field induces an EMF across the coil. This is called a self-induced EMF because the coil is inducing an EMF in itself due to its own changing current. So when the current in the coil changes, the magnetic field changes, and this changing magnetic field induces an EMF across the coil. And this will, according to Lenz's law, oppose its own changing current. We say that the coil, or inductor as it is called, is said to have the property of inductance L. Inductance is measured in Henry's with a capital H, and the inductance of an inductor depends on its design. This means it's a property of the device itself, just like the resistance of a resistor or capacitance of a capacitor. An inductor will tend to have a large inductance if it has many turns of wire, a large area and is wound on an iron core. Removing the iron core from an inductor so that it's just an air cord inductor will therefore decrease its inductance. And you can't physically change the inductance of an inductor without actually altering the inductor itself. We can define the inductance L of an inductor as 1 Henry when an EMF of 1 volt is induced across the ends of the inductor when the current in the inductor changes at a rate of 1 ampere per second. And we also have an equation for the self-induced EMF in an inductor, and this depends on the inductance and the rate of change of current through the inductor. So we use the symbol epsilon to mean self-induced EMF, which is the same as back EMF, and this is equal to minus L di by dt, where epsilon is the self-induced EMF or back EMF measured in volts, L is the inductance of the inductor measured in Henry's with a capital H, I is current measured in amperes, and T is time measured in seconds. It then says to note that the negative sign indicates that the EMF opposes the change in current. So this negative sign indicates that the EMF is opposing this change in current di by dt. I should also point out that when doing calculations with this equation, you will get this relationship on the relationship sheet in the exam, and sometimes you'll get a value for the whole rate of change of current di by dt, or you might get given separate values for the change in current and the change in time, and you can just put these into a fraction. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.